This is Jane Lowe at Black Hat Asia 2023, and with me today, I'm very privileged and very uh, pleased to have Crisando Ryan from Binus University in Indonesia joining yes. us. Yeah, thank you so much for your time today. Thanks for inviting me. Thank you. So, um, may I call you Ryan? Ryan, Ryan. Ryan, yes. So, Ryan, um, you talked about in your talk about mm -hmm. how uh, benign meetings like Zoom meetings can accidentally leak our keystroke sort of exactly. behaviors. Yeah, that's right. Right. And that could be exploited by yep. attackers. Yep. So tell us, you know, what attackers use this for? Okay. What, what, why is keystroke behavior so important to attackers? Right. So there's actually two practical use case uh, of this attack. The first one is uh, for the keystroke dynamics authentication. So for those of you who don't know about keystroke dynamics authentication, it is a type of two-factor authentication where mm -hmm. in, instead of just validating whether your password is right or wrong, mm -hmm. uh, the, the system will also validate how similar or how, uh, how uh, the behavior of your typing. So for example, when my password is, for example, undo1234, and then somebody else stealing my password, and then they try to input it into the system. But the system will know that uh, the attacker's typing password, the typing pattern is different from mm -hmm, my typing pattern, mm -hmm. so they will not let them in. So, by if an attacker is able to exploit and to expose the victim's typing pattern, mm -hmm. uh, the victim's typing pattern is leaked somewhere, then they might be. It's a possibility that they can bypass this kind of multi-factor authentication. So basically, they copy yes. the way I type, say, exactly. a, a and a H yes. and the amount of yes. delay between the two characters. For exactly. Example. They mimic and they copy uh, how you type the characters. So attackers can mimic uh, these behaviors yep. and use it as a two-factor authentication mm -hmm. method. So what kind of systems out there use uh, keystroke behavior as a second-factor authentication? Well, so uh, the, although it's not as global or as common as fingerprint, but keystroke dynamics authentication is, is gaining attention. Mm. So for example, the uh, Coursera, if you know Coursera, oh, uh, right. one, of, yeah, uh, one of the largest uh, MOC platform, they started integrating Keystroke Dynamics mm. into a system called Signature Track, where they constantly analyzing your typing pattern when you're uh, answering the questions. So this has been happening since 2012. Mm -hmm. And yeah, if you can mimic somebody else's typing pattern, then it's possible that you could cheat your exam on Coursera. Oh, right. Oh, I yeah. see. Okay. Wow. Okay. So what are the advantages uh, of using this as a two-factor authentication versus oh. for, for online education platforms yes. like that? So um, the other primary uh, use case for a keystroke dynamics uh, is usually we use it for cyber forensic. Uh, for example, when whenever there's a typing, uh, there's a cyber incident and then somebody place or somebody types malicious comment and run it across the uh, server, then it is the job or is the, the, the objective of the cyber forensic to identify who that person is. Right. right. We want to uh, catch the culprit. Okay. And yeah, Keystroke Dynamic can help with that All because right. uh, yeah, you can presumably know based on uh, how they type the shell comment, how they type the exploit password, mm -hmm. uh, who that person is using right. the keystroke biometrics. All right, so in your work, what you do is you do a video capture yes. of our users mm -hmm. in, say, um, Zoom meetings, mm -hmm. for example, and uh, during the screen sharing uh, session, yes. you capture the keystrokes yes. um, of uh, the users. Exactly during those sessions, uh -huh. right? Uh -huh. So you use this video, um, a, a combination of different algorithms yep. to capture um, the characters, mm. to identify the characters, yep. and then to also time the delay between exactly. the type. Yes. Okay. Uh, first of all, uh, video, uh, I want to highlight, I want to emphasize that video is really an easy way for the attacker to get your typing behavior, mm. because nowadays we, we, all of us, I think it's safe to say that all of us use uh, online video meetings, right? And in video meetings such mm -hmm. as Zoom, Microsoft Teams, and, and things like that, mm -hmm. we often share our screen. That's right. And whenever we share our screen, there will, there's a high probability that a typing activity will occur. Mm. So for example, somebody else, somebody's sharing their screen and they're typing it, the attacker can visually 
uh, observe mm-hmm. how fast they're typing, how fast, uh, how slow they're typing, mm-hmm. and things like that. So, the media, the video media, is is really common and it's really easy to be exploited. And uh, as for your question earlier, how how do I approach this method? Is that there's practically two things. Sorry, three things. First one is we need to be able to extract the character out of the video. That's right. And then the second one is after we've been able to extract the character, then we need to be able to calculate the delay of that character. But And the information that we got is only the frame of the video where the character appears. So we're not using Keylogger in this. We're not using any hardware and software. Uh, I was going to ask, malware. yes, that's yeah. right. So uh, yeah, only from the video frames, mm-hmm. and then we try to invert the delay between mm-hmm. one keystroke into other keystroke. Mm-hmm. And third one is then how we able to expose or unmask the mask password whenever somebody's typing uh, their password, but their password is visible. Oh right, screen. yeah, I was yeah. going to ask you about yeah. that too. So two questions I'm going to ask: All right. you. keylogger and uh-huh. unmasking. Yes. So let's go with the keylogger okay. first. So the keylogger is, I guess, the traditional method yep. of logging yes. um, people's typing mm-hmm. behaviors, right? Exactly. So your method actually do not require physical access to sure. um, the, the victim's yep. uh, computer. But I guess uh, with remote meetings, the attacker will have to find a way to, uh, I guess, uh, get invited into mm-hmm. these meetings in mm-hmm. order to do a video yes. capture. Is that right? Yes. Okay. So, uh, yeah, uh, with, with this method, we eliminate the need uh, for a keylogger. Mm. But, yeah, uh, that's, that's a good point, that mm-hmm. the attacker needs to find uh, their mm-hmm. way into the, the video meetings. Mm-hmm. But Zoom meetings and screen sharing meetings is not the only source of data, I believe. Because whenever, uh, for example, uh, if we go to YouTube, to Udemy, to Coursera, mm-hmm. there will be tutor mm-hmm. who are explaining things in, 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 in the format of uh, programming languages or in the format of document and they're typing as well. Mm-hmm. So it's not only uh, from the Zoom meetings and from the, the uh, online video meetings that we can get this video for our data source. Yeah, so YouTube, uh, Coursera, anything that you can uh, find a video wherever uh, when uh, the actor is sharing their screen, it could work. And there's, of, of course, uh, in addition to Keylogger, mm-hmm. other sort of uh, uh, work that has been yep. done in the past mm-hmm. that use uh, video capturing yep. as well? Uh, yeah. Uh, I think you mentioned in your talk. Yes, uh, there was also a research called Sil TV by Balagani and friends. So mm-hmm. we, we are highly influenced by this paper. So mm-hmm. the paper is called Sil TV, I believe. But their approach is slightly different than ours. Okay. So what they, they were doing is that they record an ATM screen or a computer screen whenever the user is typing uh, a password. Okay. So it's using the actual uh, handycam or camcorder that oh. records the uh, computer screen. Right, right. So yeah, uh, I think the limitation of, of that method is that the camcorder has to be uh, physically near the victim. Near the That's, victim right. That's right. right, okay. Yeah, so, so that doesn't work as well. Yes, okay. exactly. Right, right. Okay, so now to the second question. Uh-huh. I'm asking the passwords, right? Yeah. So basically, what um, I'm gathering here is that you create or you create a synthetic sort of yes. typing pattern. Yes. And from that, you know the characters mm-hmm. as well. Well, you, you infer the characters, yep. and then the combination of both um, can allow you to uh, uh, observe. Uh, victims are uh, typing a password that's been masked on mm-hmm. the screen. Yes. To re- reverse engineer yes. what characters will be. In- yes, exactly. Okay. To reveal uh, what's the password is being inputted by the user. Right, okay. Yep. So that is quite scary, isn't it? Um, it is, really, because uh, this is something that we observe in Indonesia. Whenever we are Zoom meeting or uh, whenever we are share our sc- sharing our screen mm. in any way, uh, be it in a Zoom meeting or we record our, our screen with OBS and things like that, we often, uh, people in Indonesia is kind of lazy to just temporarily stop their screen sharing whenever they're inputting something sensitive, mm-hmm. such as password. Because uh, they often, the, the common argument is that they think, yeah, my password is uh, protected with ballot 
mass symbol. That's exactly so why, right. Yeah. Yes. Why do why yeah. do we have to bother to stop exactly. our screen sharing? That's right. Yeah, but in fact that by knowing the key delay mm -hmm. uh, of that uh, typing, mm -hmm. it is possible. Uh, we discovered that it is possible to invert. Mm -hmm. uh, the password, the characters behind that ballot mass symbol. Okay, so then uh, my next question mm -hmm. uh, is, you know, for audience who are listening yep. to this, they'll be concerned. Okay, so if I attend, say, a Zoom meeting, mm -hmm. I share my screen, yes. you know, I leak my typing behavior, and then I also uh, accidentally yep. uh, do the uh -huh. password, yes. uh, although it's masked. In that just one session, yes. I, will you be able to inf re reverse engineer my password or you need multiple sessions? Right, so that's, that's a very good question. So uh, I don't think that one session is enough mm. to invert the password behind the, the ballot mass symbol because what uh, our model do is that they study, they continuously study your typing pattern from time to time. So if we only have the data, if uh, uh, somebody accidentally uh, exposed uh, their password, they did not stop their uh, screen sharing yeah. whenever inputting the password, I think they're still pretty much safe. But if this uh, behavior happens from time to time, okay. then the attacker will have uh, will accumulate enough data right. to study uh, their typing behavior, and that uh, typing behavior can be used to unmask. Right. Finally, unmask the password. Okay, so for many of us, mm -hmm. um, can we? Is it fair then to say, oh, you know, I'm only attending this Zoom meeting mm -hmm. once? I don't know, once a month. Yeah. You know, it's, I, I don't have to worry so much oh, about this right. because the attackers have to make sure has has to know uh -huh. when I'm attending uh -huh. and then capture my behavior. Yes. It's too much work for them. Uh, well, I think it, it because this is a behavior-based exploitations. Uh, then everybody needs to, to start to make this a habit or a mm. behavior. And it's really hard if you keep uh, lowering your discipline. You know, oh, this is just uh, one session meeting and I don't have to worry about it. And I'm afraid it will be become a non-secure habit. Oh, so, yeah, I yeah. do agree with you, yes. yes. So uh, my advice is that yeah, you should be mindful on what your audiences are, mm -hmm. uh, whether it's your colleague or somebody, uh, some some strangers. You need to be able to aware that an attacker mm -hmm. could potentially leak uh, anything out of you, mm -hmm. from even from unexpected data source such That's as right. video. Yeah. yeah. The thing is also uh, with um, uh, online meetings, mm -hmm. a lot of them are can be recorded yep. and played back on demand. Exactly. So attacker can also potentially compromise you yes. know, access yes. to these videos. And, yes, exactly. Right? And as I've mentioned before, uh, maybe you're, you're teaching your friend a programming language or you're, you're recording your screen where you're composing a document and you upload it yourself to YouTube. Mm -hmm. The attacker can very easily download those videos from YouTube and use it as their data source. That's right, yeah. Yep. And then my final question mm -hmm. is, we talk about characters uh, yes. in the context. I think a lot of us will assume that is you know A B C D E yes. F G, right? Uh -huh. So it, it's not really um, applicable to other languages, uh, is it? Right. Okay. So this is another good question, and we believe that the language and the keyboard layout should not uh, affect the effectiveness of this attack. Okay. Because what we've been trying to learn here is the delay between one character and the other. So whenever, uh, even if you're typing in France, you're typing in Indonesia, you're typing in English mm -hmm. and, and things like that, uh, what matters is the delay between character one character into the other character. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. So I don't think language is uh, would be an inhibitor in this case. And of, what about special characters and you know characters in caps, is that Okay. Uh, additional Char complexity. Yes, yes. Uh, character in caps and special characters numbers would introduce additional complexity because whenever you're uh, typing in caps lock, uh, you usually use more than one keystrokes, right? right? You press the shift and then right. you press the, yeah, uh, the right. character that you want to uh, make it a cap capital case. Yeah, so that will introduce another possibility and we haven't been able to, to uh, explore that options yet. Mm -hmm. So as of now, we're focusing on on the alphanumeric char lowercase characters. All oh, right. Okay. Yeah. So I guess another advice for audience then, mm -hmm. uh, in addition to you know, don't type your passwords you know mm -hmm. on screen during screen saving is make sure that your passwords contain um, 
of a uh, uh, well special characters yes, and com exactly. com complex pastimes, yeah, right? Yeah, 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 yeah. It's it's a free thing to do. It's a really easy thing to do Correct. to introduce a capital case, uh, special characters, and yeah, it can make your password even secure. That's right. This kind of attack. Right. Okay. Yeah. So uh, thank you so much, Ryan, uh, for you. your time today. It's and a pleasure. Any sort of last advice for our audience besides those two takeaways? Uh, well, uh, from my experience, uh, if you guys are a cybersecurity practitioner, look elsewhere uh, in the terms of attack. Uh, maybe you try to find some other ways that people don't think about mm. whenever they're planning an attack. And yeah, uh, I believe in, in cybersecurity domain, there are a lot of areas untouched still untouched, unresearched, mm -hmm. and that could pose a significant uh, risk mm -hmm. uh, to the future of, of the internet. So yeah, uh, if you're a good guy, then maybe we uh, all of us need, need, need your help to, to explore those areas mm. so that it cannot be exploited by the bad hackers for us. Right, okay. Yeah, sounds good takeaway so for our cybersecurity professionals then, and also for our general uh, public. Yes. Right, uh, exactly. passwords. Uh, uh -huh. Uh, strong password. Yes, right? strong yeah. password is is really uh, important. And if I may uh, add another point, is that I I personally believe that password is getting obsolete oh, right. now. Okay. So in minimum, what you have to do is you need to have a two-factor authentication. Mm, so don't just rely on on passwords. Yeah. Even even though your password is 32 characters long and full of combination special mm. character capital and, and things like that but always use a two-factor authentication I, I totally agree yes OTP yes, and right. things like that yeah that's a minimum yeah or maybe we'll go on to 3FA yes right that will be very great 3FA <laughs> 4FA all right yeah, yeah. <laughs> on that note thank you so yeah. much Ryan for your time thank today you so thank much. you so much likewise it's a pleasure